right, guys. Alec Pierce at the ranch. Now, listen, um, part of that getting ready for the winter here at the ranch is uh, taking care of this little toy right here. This is a zero clearance wood stove. You've seen the back of it in my previous videos. And this heats the house. Again, in my previous videos, I, I, you can see how we actually, we can actually pump, blow the heat, which is in the basement from this wood stove in the basement around the whole house. Warms the whole house. Simple system that we, I put in myself and, and simple components. It's inexpensive. Works really, really well. We're really, really pleased with this wood stove. But it does require some maintenance. So, so we decided this year, we, we, there were a couple of small issues with it. We decided this year we would do the whole job, do the whole thing. So one of the things that I've noticed over the past uh, year is that the, uh, the uh, refractory bricks, they're called, refractory stone, fire bricks. But they call them refractory stone. They can charge more that way. <laughs> uh, some of them had broken. Some had broken pretty badly. Here's, here's one, for example, that sits up on the side and it broke, snapped right in half. Now, this one also sits on the side. See this big one here, larger one, and you see it's broken two or three places, broken completely through. And, uh, and, and the reason for that is, there's a couple of reasons for that. The first reason is that over time with the hot, extremely hot, very, very hot, because we run the fireplace hot. Again, in my videos, we talk about that, how you keep the chimney clean. So we run the fireplace, so it gets very hot, then it cools down, very hot and cools down. It doesn't matter what it's made of, it expands, contracts, expands, contracts, and then with the changes in humidity in the house between summer and winter and so on, the stone itself starts to break down. That's the first thing. Secondly, unfortunately, we're not always as perfectly careful as we should be when we load the stove, when we put wood in, particularly if you have a fire going and you're adding wood to it. So unfortunately, sometimes the logs, you know, they're good sized, get thrown in so you don't get too hot. You don't burn yourself. You tend to throw it in. It hits the stones. They're already weak and they break. So anyway, the bottom line is that the stones in this fireplace are broken. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to show you how we refinish the front because it's, you know, 20 years. It's not as pretty as it used to be. And I'm also going to show you how we seal the doors and then how we check the doors to make sure that they're adjusted and sealed properly. We're going to do all that. But today, stones. So Here's what I did. First of all, you have to get to the stones. I'll fix that too sometime. <laughs> there's a, there's a knob. <laughs> no, don't be a smart ass, Kevin. Don't be laughing at me. That, that knob just fastens on, but it has to be in, in the uh, summertime, it, it shrinks. So you take the doors. The doors come right off. I won't take them off right now. And so now you see the inside of the, of the uh, wood stove itself. And you see that it has been hot in there. I haven't taken time yet. I'm just going to quickly go in with a wire brush and just quickly clean it all off and then uh, re-vacuum it. I've already done it once. And uh, the, the, the entire interior of this is lined with fire brick. Not the bottom. The bottom is just steel. But there's a large stone that goes across the back. I'll show you that stone in a moment. Uh, sorry, there's a large stone that sits at the top. It sits on two angle brackets. I'm not sure if you can see that angle bracket in there, but it's angle bracket at the top like this. And a large stone, one big stone sits on top like so. Okay? And then at the back there are two stones. Two stones. And then on each side there are two stones. When I first started to do this, and I had already priced these stones out, I called RSF, the company in Montreal that makes these wood stoves, fantastic stones, by the way. RSF is the name, and this is called the Opal. Opal. Opal 2. Anyway, uh, I called them, and they wanted uh, $300 for the set of stones. $300. That's not installed, plus tax and shipping. Anyway, I had a lot of money. So I said to myself, you know, I can buy fire brick. Yeah. Cut them myself and make them fit. I priced fire bricks, and you can buy fire bricks standard size, nine inches by four inches by two inches, and uh, they're cheap, six, seven bucks a piece. Anyway, <laughs> in order to line this particular stove, replace all these stones in here, would take about 24 fire bricks. Still, you know, still a, a big saving, say, I'm still looking at a couple hundred dollars. But then I have to cut them all, and I got to fit them all. And, and you can see that this is a fairly big piece of stone in there. So that would be about four fire bricks right there. So I got looking at it and thinking about it. And finally I decided, oh, heck with it. I will buy a replacement kit of refractory stones from RSF. One of the nicest things about them is they're cut to the right shape. So that particular uh, is, uh, stone right there, which is broken, there's a new one. You see? It's cut to the exact shape. So it makes it a lot easier. I just put them in. So I decided to go ahead and, and, and uh, buy a new set of refractory stones. And in order to do that, 
to get to your refractory stones, there are a couple of things that you have to do. Obviously, open the doors, and then I took the opportunity to clean it really, really well. Took all the ashes out, vacuumed it really, really well. Took all that. Then I carefully, as carefully as I could, took all the stones out. Well, six of the stones, two, four, six, broke. They were broken already. They broke in half. You saw this one earlier. This is one of the side stones, yeah, broken in half. So. Uh, 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 I took all those out. The large stone, <clears throat> there's a picture, there's a, this one over here, Kevin. The large stone, which is about 24 inches wide and 15 inches front to back, it sits up top on an angle, it wasn't broken. Good news, because that one stone is 100 bucks. Yeah. So that's good news. I did notice it has a slight bow in it. It seems to have sagged a little bit, so I'm just going to put it in upside down. I'm not sure if that'll help or not, but put the sag this way, maybe it'll sag down. I don't know. But I got the other stones. So, first of all, I should make sure that you understand why the stones are in there. That's steel. And steel's good. Steel's good. It holds the heat. But steel does tend to warp a little bit and be affected by the extreme heat. Secondly, steel doesn't hold the heat. When the fire's burning, the steel gets hot. When the fire goes out, whew, the steel gets cold. These refractory stones do several things. One of the first things is that they do reflect the heat. So, when the fire is burning, the heat, from, the heat from the fire reflects off the stones and is, and is kept within the firebox. It's not drawn away as with steel. The steel gets hot, but that heat's drawn away from the other parts of the stove. This is actually a big structure here. There's a lot of other steel in it. So it retains the heat. It reflects the heat. Most importantly, these get hot, equal to the stove. So if the fire was out, if the fire was completely out, so out that you could reach in and grab a stick and take, lift it out, it's gone. The stones are still hot, and they're still hot for a long time. So they actually take heat, and they hold that heat for a long time. Simply means that uh, you, you, get, you get more heat from your wood. Just that simple. So they've got to be replaced, and uh, this is what I decided to do. Clean it all out. Now, with this particular stove, which is a high-efficiency zero-clearance stove, it has some special features. Now, one of those special features is air wash. It has an air wash. So the air comes in from the outside of the house. There's a pipe, insulated pipe, comes from the outside of the house and feeds air in to make the fire burn. Air, the, the wood needs air to burn. So this air comes from the outside, feeds into the fire, and the wood burns. And as the wood burns, the, the combustion products, smoke, if you like, go up the chimney. And this is much better than a fireplace. A fireplace takes air from the room into the fireplace, burns with the wood, goes up the chimney. So the air in the room, which you want to be warm, it's constantly being drawn out like this. Now you get some heat out the fireplace, but then a few seconds later that heat is drawn back in and goes up the chimney. So that's the difference between a stove, a wood stove, and a fireplace. When the air comes in from the outside, it could just go into the stove, but they don't do that. What they do instead is they feed that through this tube. And you can see that this tube has a lot of holes in it. This is an air wash. Those holes, this, tu this tube, fits right across the front, held in by one screw, very simple, one screw, and, those, and, and the air comes in through that tube, and the air comes out through these holes and blows down over the glass. It blows right down over the glass. When the fire is burning in this wood stove, you can actually see the air coming down over this and keeps the glass clean, races down to the bottom, goes underneath the wood, helps the wood to burn. It's the most efficient if the air is coming from underneath. And then it goes around inside the stove, burns all that, and then eventually out the chimney, makes it really hot. So this, this is an air wash, this tube. That has to come out. Simple enough. And I took the opportunity to clean it really well. And in your stove, if yours is a little different, there may be other attachments. We also have this screen that fits up just underneath this area here, which also helps to direct the air over the glass. Helps keep the glass clean and helps the circulation of the air. So you have to take all those things out and of course when they're up, clean them up really, really well. And you end up with what you see right here. Just that simple. So now all I really have to do is put that large stone back in first. Get somebody to help me lift it up. They're not too heavy. It probably weighs about 25 pounds. Pick it up carefully. Carefully. Slide it into the bracket and set it down in place. And then the rest is quite easy. Uh, uh, for example, here's a... This is a, uh, this is a side stone. So if you, if you Paid any attention at all. They only go in one way. If you paid any attention at all to how the stones uh, uh, came out, then uh, when, you, when you're ready to put them back in, you just set them back in. And they're labeled. When you buy them from the factory, they are...
labeled and numbered. So that one fits in like so. And then the next one, this, this is one of the cornerstones, sits in beside it, and, and because there's that angle there and fits in. And, and it's two on this side and two at the back. When you put the two at the back in place, they're held in by a bracket, and uh, they help, help to keep the sides from falling over as well. So, pretty simple. Don't be afraid to do it. It has to be done once in a while. Get the doors off. Take the stones out. Clean everything. Make sure any attachments are taken out. Everything's clean. It's a little bit rusty, so I'm going to take this and steel wool it. Make sure it's nice and clean as possible. And the plug will replace the screws. Get your stones. Slowly, carefully put them back in place, just the way they came out. And get that big one back on top first. Get the other ones in the side and put everything back together. I'm going to show you uh, what we do on the doors, how we put in new... Uh, um, uh, seal on the edges. There's this, this uh, heavy fiberglass seal that goes around the edges of the door. So when the doors close, it seals tightly against the front because you want no air leakage. That seals tight. I'm going to show you how that happens. How that's done in a, in a next video. And, uh, and when, uh, when that's done, you'll be able to see all the nice new stones in there as well. Anyway, it's not a clean job, but it's an important job. Helps keep your house warm. Helps you to preserve the, that wood that we work so hard to keep. And uh, I think it's going to be really, really nice. I'm looking forward. I'm actually looking forward to the winter. We really like our wood stove. It's nice. There's nothing like a nice wood stove when you come in from the outside after a day of snowmobiling or working outside. It's a lot of fun to climb in, and the wood stove is blazing. So we're looking forward to it. So shortly, I'm going to show you how, to, how, the, how the doors, how to seal them, and how to check them to make sure that they're sealed properly because they're adjustable, and a few other things as well about our wood stove. Anyway, if you've uh, thought about doing your wood stove, Maybe that gives you a, 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 a bit of help, encourages you to get in there and do it yourself. Save a whole bunch of money. Talk to you real soon. i got to get busy here, and we'll talk to you in a little while with some more videos about our wood stove. Take care. Alec Pierce at the ranch. Mm -hmm.